In this program, we shall look at the paddling up and changing of shoe fuses on electric multiple unit trains operated by the South Central Division. A ruptured shoe fuse, or in rare cases, damaged shoe gear, can easily be detected by observation of the conductor rail gapping and the line indicator on the driving desk. Where the line supply is lost at each small gap in the conductor rail, this is a sure symptom of a blown shoe fuse or defective shoe. All you need to do is observe which side the conductor rail is situated when the loss of the line supply takes place, and you have identified which side of the unit the blown fuse will be found. Let's begin with the 1963 mainline stock, of which there are two basic classes, the low-density SIG and the high-density VEP. As we can see from the graphic, each four-car unit has four collector shoes, one shoe mounted on each side of the leading bogey on each of the driving trailer vehicles. Adjacent to each shoe is a ribbon shoe fuse mounted below the sole bar. All four shoes are connected via shoe leads and power junction boxes to the power train line which runs throughout the unit. On the motor coach, the power train line is connected to the traction equipment via an equipment isolating link. Also connected to the power train line are the auxiliaries including the compressor, motor generator and heaters and at each end of the motor coach are two shed jumper connections. It is important to remember that there is no connection between the power train lines on adjacent units when coupled in multiple. It is also vitally important to remember that on any one unit a single shoe in contact with the conductor rail will mean that the whole power circuit is live. The same thing applies if the shed jumper is connected and the shed supply is live. Now let's look at the changing of a shoe fuse. Secure the train by destroying the brake pipe pressure and applying the parking brake. Leave the master switch in the on position so that the cab radio will still work. Now Hello call there. the conductor. He will need to make a PA announcement stating that the train will be on emergency lighting for a few minutes. This will reassure the customers. Begin by checking that the line indicator shows on in the driving cab and switching on the cab light. Now go to the brake compartment in the motor coach and trip the auxiliary isolating switch. Check that the emergency train lights go out. Return to the leading driving cab. Check that the line indicator shows off and take down the two wooden paddles and the shoe fuse box spanner from the rack. Isolate the shoe at this end of the unit by lifting the shoe with one paddle while sliding the second paddle between the shoe and the top surface of the conductor rail. When this has been done, place the first paddle under the shoe so that both are side by side at 90 degrees to the conductor rail. Now go to the rear cab and repeat this procedure. Once all shoes have been paddled up, the unit should be isolated from the traction current. However, don't take anything for granted. A simple oversight could cost you your life. Before touching anything which might possibly still be live, go to the motor coach. Close the auxiliary isolating switch. Then go to the driving cab and check that the line indicator still shows off while the cab light is on again. Now return to the motor coach and again trip the auxiliary isolating switch. This is very important. You can now change the blown shoe fuse with the confidence that the power circuit is dead. Take a new 12 inch ribbon fuse from the cupboard. Using the wooden shoe fuse box spanner, simply undo the securing nuts at each end of the fuse holder. Remove the two parts of the ruptured fuse. Fit the new fuse. Then tighten the securing nuts. Some units are fitted with double shoe fuses. In this case, replace with double shoe fuses. Now that you've renewed the blown fuse, you can remove each of the four paddles from under the collector shoes. Finally, close the auxiliary isolating switch, reset the train lighting, and return to the driving cab, checking that the line indicator shows on. Don't forget to replace the paddles and shoe fuse spanner in the racks provided and report the matter to the train crew supervisor as soon as possible. Before we look at some other problems associated with shoe gear on 1963 stock, let's just return to the vital matter of tripping the auxiliary isolating switch before attempting to paddle up.
For example, should the compressor be running when you attempt to place the paddle between the shoe and the conductor rail, a severe arc will be drawn. You could be severely burned or sustain eye injury. 1963 stock units containing a buffet car have an additional auxiliary isolating switch situated below the sole bar at one end of the underslung equipment box. Don't forget to trip this auxiliary isolating switch if the unit includes a buffet car. If the shoe gear is damaged, try to run the defective shoe into a conductor rail gap before paddling up the unit as we've already seen. With damaged shoe gear, there may be severe arcing and the risk of displacing the conductor rail itself. Using the cab radio or a suitable telephone if one is handy, obtain the current isolation. Now apply the short circuiting bar in front of the train as an additional protection. Check that the line indicator shows off. Once this has been done, you can deal with the damaged shoe gear by removing or tying it up as necessary using the tools and equipment in the emergency tool cupboard. Check that the shoe lead is safely tied out of harm's way and then remove the adjacent shoe fuse. Once the damaged shoe gear has been secured and the shoe fuse removed, you can remove the paddles. Now contact the electrical control operator, advising him that you are going to remove the short circuiting bar. Once this has been done, the traction current can be restored. Should fire occur on any part of the power circuit of a unit, your first action must be to apply a short circuiting bar. Once the traction current is off, you should immediately attend to the safety of people on board the train and take steps to extinguish the fire. Once this has been done, paddle up all shoes on the defective unit and remove all four shoe fuses. Finally, the short circuiting bar can be removed and the traction supply restored. Of course, if the train consists of a single unit, assistance will be required. Power fuses are of the cartridge type and are located in the auxiliary cupboard on the motor coach. Before changing one of these fuses, select a spare fuse. Make sure that the spare fuse is the correct value. Don't just change like for like, the fuse may have blown because it was of incorrect value. Test the spare fuse on the fuse tester trip the auxiliary isolating switch. Wait a few moments for the MG set to run down. Then replace the ruptured fuse. Finally, reset the auxiliary isolating switch. The class 455 is a four-car unit having four collector shoes and adjacent ribbon shoe fuses, one on each side of the leading and trailing end bogies. The class 456 is a two-car unit with identical shoe and shoe fuse configuration. The emergency procedures for paddling up, shoe fuse renewal and dealing with damaged shoe gear or fire are in most respects the same as for the 1963 stock. However, instead of an auxiliary isolating switch in the motor coach, the class 455 and 456 are equipped with auxiliary strip and set buttons in each driving cab. If fire or serious arcing occurs on class 455 or 456, follow the same procedure as for 1963 stock. In the case of fire, where units are coupled in multiple, you must trip the battery positive MCB on the affected unit to prevent restarting the fire when the auxiliary set button is depressed on the unaffected unit. Of course, if the fire is on a single unit, the battery positive MCB must still be tripped. This is most important. In this case, of course, assistance will be required. On class 455 units, auxiliaries, trip and set buttons are duplicated in the control cupboard located in the motor coach saloon. This cupboard also contains the fuse tester. Auxiliary power fuses of the cartridge type are housed in a cupboard on the opposite bulkhead. On class 456, the power fuses are also located in a cupboard in the motor coach saloon. The fuses are housed behind a clear perspex cover. The green indicator light must be on before removal or replacement of a fuse. 
The fuse tester is located in the environmental cabinet, above the wash hand basin in the toilet. The class 319 is a four car dual voltage unit operating either on the 25 kV overhead line system or on the 750 volt conductor rail. When operating on the 25 kV overhead line, electrical isolation of the unit from the traction supply can be affected by lowering the pantograph and pressing the auxiliary strip button. When operating on the 750 volt third rail, the class 319 unit collects traction current from four shoes, mounted one on each side of the leading and trailing bogies, and each with an adjacent ribbon shoe fuse. The procedure for paddling up is essentially the same as for both the 1963 stock and the classes 455 and 456. Auxiliary trip and set buttons are provided on the bulkhead behind the driving position. Renewal of a shoe fuse on a class 319 unit should be recorded in the repair book. Should a fire occur on a class 319 unit, follow exactly the same procedure as for a class 455 or 456. Auxiliary power fuses on class 319 are located in the cabinet in the near side toilet on the ATS vehicle. Again, a green indicator light is provided and must be on before a fuse is removed or replaced. The cabinet in the off side toilet contains the auxiliary's trip and set buttons and the fuse tester. Let's just recap on some important safety issues. Never attempt to lift a shoe from the conductor rail with a paddle unless the auxiliary isolating switch is tripped. Or on class 455, 456 or 319 units, the auxiliary's trip button has been depressed. Never use anything but the correct authorized paddles for shoe lifting and never use anything but the authorized shoe fuse box spanner for fuse renewal. When paddling up and changing a shoe fuse, be extremely vigilant for trains passing on adjacent tracks. Danger is particularly acute when the conductor rail is situated in the six foot. If you're not absolutely sure that you can carry out the task in a position of safety, ask the signalman to block the opposite or adjacent line. Never attempt to change a shoe fuse unless you are absolutely positive that all shoes on the unit are paddled up and isolated from the conductor rail. Check visually, cut in the auxiliary isolating switch or auxiliary set and then double check the line indicator. Don't forget to trip the auxiliary isolating switch or auxiliary's trip again before actually changing the fuse. In cases of fire or severe arcing, isolate the traction current by means of the short circuiting bar and then attend immediately to the safety of passengers. Short circuiting bars should only be used by staff who have been trained and certified to use them. The 750 volt traction current can kill. Stop and think. Put safety first. <laughs>